and turn my camera off. So thanks, Joe. Thank you. Alrighty, so I am Joe. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Um, and also my contact information is behind me, but I'll have it at the end too, if you wanna get in touch or have questions. So um, you can find the slides at this go link, which, oh, and Sam has posted this in the chat, so perfect. Um, so there are some clickable links in there if you'd like to go back and um, you know click on stuff, play around with some of these tools, um, they are there for you. So um, I'm gonna start this off with a quick question that I get a lot from folks, um, which is, can you recommend any easy tools? So folks come, they email me, they want you know an easy, quick out of the box. What can I just click and point and make a bar graph with? Um, so the easiest tool, and my answer for them usually is normally the tool that you already have. Um, sometimes that tool isn't sufficient. Sometimes it doesn't really do what you need it to do. So um, out of the tools that I'm going to show you, which hopefully you know will have a use that's sufficient for your needs, um, out of those tools, none of them are particularly easy or particularly difficult to learn. So um, it really depends on where you're coming from, what your background is, and what you're already familiar with. So for example, I'm familiar with R, um, and which is a, a command line kind of text interface. So you type in a code to tell the program to do a thing. It gives you an output versus like a click and point tool like Microsoft Excel, where you have buttons that you can click on to tell the program what to do. Um, so I'm more familiar with R because I used it um, as my primary data analysis tool in undergrad. So for me, creating a chart in R is 10 times easier than learning Tableau, learning how to use all of these other data viz specific tools. Um, but for you, that might be different. So um, I'm not gonna focus on, you know, ease of learning versus difficulty of learning because that really will be different for everybody. Um, and sometimes you really just need a quick and dirty bar chart in Excel or in Google Sheets, which we already have access to. So I'm gonna try to cover a wide range of disciplines. So I see in the you know, attendee list, a lot of y'all are from different departments, different areas of campus, different units, and from those different backgrounds. So I'm gonna try and cover a wide range of those, a wide range of approaches. So whether you're using things in a web browser versus using things that are downloaded as software programs. Um, I'm also gonna try to cover a wider range of versatility or flexibility. So not only tools that are specifically for data visualization, but tools that you could use for other purposes too. So for example, Microsoft Excel, you can do a lot with that beyond visualization. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to find not only a tool to use, but the right tool to add to your metaphorical tool belt um, for the specific job that you need to do or for jobs that you might wanna do later in the future. Alrighty. So to help guide that process, um, as I go through these tools, I'm going to you know, cover um, some aspects of these tools um, using these questions to kind of guide that. So uh, there are tons of tools out there, including the ones that I have uh, selected to show you all today. So it can be very difficult to pick just the one uh, that you need um, or the few that you need. Um, out of all of these, there's so many different tools. So some questions to ask that will help guide you when you're picking that tool and uh, which I'll use to help describe the tools that I'm looking at today. Um, so the first question is what data do you work with? So what type of data, what format and what size are you working with? So are you working with a lot of data or just you know a couple of variables? Um, are you looking at survey or assessment data? Um, maybe temperature data over time to get really specific or demographic data or statistics even. So what's the type of data you're working with is really important to look at. Um, additionally, are you going to be working with anything that is sensitive, personally identifiable, or otherwise private information? So who will have access to the data um, that you upload to some of these database tools, um, especially with free tools that are web-based or in browser? Um, a lot of times they will have uh, you know, clauses about who owns the data that you upload. So it might not be private once you upload it. So it's important to make sure that you check the terms and conditions before you make accounts or upload your data to make sure it's really what uh, is right for you and your data needs. Um, second question is what tools do you use to interact with your data already? So what tools do you already know? Um, so for example, Microsoft Excel, a lot of folks are already somewhat familiar with that or have at least looked at it. Um, Google Sheets is the kind of competitor with that. Um, that we have access to with our UNCG like Spartan uh, Gmail address. Um, whether you already know Python or R, or maybe even Adobe Acrobat and word processors, which I've seen some folks use to create charts as well. So do you even need a new tool? Does your toolbox already have something that will work in it? Um, if you do already have something in your toolbox, but it has limitations. So say you wanna make a map 
And you know, Microsoft Excel doesn't really do maps. So you would use that to help look for a new tool um, and that can help you pick, uh, narrow it down. Um, you wanna look at whether you're familiar or comfortable using or learning command line or computing heavy tools. So are you going to be looking at R, which has that text interface where you type in a code, um, or are you looking for something that's more out of the box, easy to use, like point and click buttons where you don't have to do a lot of guesswork. So something that's more intuitive and has a graphical user interface. And then would you rather learn a tool that can only be used for data viz, so just data visualization specific tools, or would you prefer to do something or to learn something that is kind of like a Swiss army knife and has multiple uses for your data? So if you know you're going to be doing other research activities like analysis or cleaning, you might pick R or Python or a different tool than say data wrapper, which is another example that I'll show you. Um, and then finally, you wanna look at what you're trying to create and why. So what type of graph or chart or other visualization do you want to make? So for example, maps, um, what are you trying to show? So are you trying to show relationships between your data, um, maybe correlations or distribution of your data? Um, or parts of a whole, which would be like a pie chart, if you want to show the percentage of that whole uh, sample that you're looking at. Um, you want to look at how you're going to use your resulting data visualization and also where it will live and what format it needs to be in. So is this something that will be used to analyze your information in your data, or is it something that will be used to share it? Um, so will it live in an image, a PDF, maybe even an interactive embed? So you can uh, embed charts that are interactive and you can click on them and um, they're dynamic and you can make them live so that they update in real time, which is really cool. Um, but if you need something that's going to be print, say in like a scholarly journal or a book, um, you might need to be able to export your image, uh, your visualization as an image or a PDF. Um, so that interactive embed won't really work for you. Um, or if you're gonna be doing social media, you might want something that's more flashy and eye-catching and has a good design versus you know, the typical like boring black and white graphs that you see in scholarly journal articles. Um, so these are important questions to ask when you're picking the right tool for the job. And I'll refer back to these with our tools that I'm looking at. So let's look at some of those tools. Um, I'm gonna start with the one you already have. Um, so these are spreadsheet programs. So most, if not all of us already have a spreadsheet program on our computer. Um, we either have Excel, Microsoft Excel. If you have a Mac, you might have Numbers. We have Google Sheets. So everybody with a UNCG email has access to Google Sheets. Um, and then there's also LibreCalc is the open source like Linux version of Microsoft Excel, essentially. Um, so these are multifunctional tools. They're not primarily for data viz, so they'll have other features available to you, um, which also usually means they're limited to pretty standard charts and graphs, and they're kind of limited in what customization options you have. Um, for most purposes, they're pretty sufficient. You can make a really nice looking uh, chart with these spreadsheet programs. Um, they have graphical user interface with buttons. So they're also really helpful for people that are just starting out or still learning design tips with data viz because you don't have to learn a new tool and how to make a data viz look good at the same time. You can just focus on the data viz part because you already know the tool. Um, and these are considered to be quick and easy kind of, um, depending on your experience with these spreadsheet programs previously. So quick comparison of these, we've got Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, Numbers, and LibreCalc. I've got some pros or some notable features on the top of this little table. And then I've got things to uh, that might be barriers or cons um, on the bottom. So with Excel, it's popular and versatile. It's been around forever. There are so many tutorials and guides on how to use it, um, but it technically is not free. So I've started out my tool list with one that is not technically free. Um, I believe at UNCG, we do have access to that. Um, and students have access to a discounted version, but if you're on your own, Microsoft Excel might not be available for you. Google Sheets um, is a web-based uh, program. So where Microsoft Excel numbers and LibreCalc are all downloaded uh, programs on your computer, Google Sheets is going to be web-based, um, which is really handy because it lets you embed and export visualizations easily, which is really cool. Um, if you have a website or if you wanna embed something in say like a research guide, which is what librarians use it for a lot, or at least I do. Um, but the downside of that is you do need an account and you do need an internet connection. Um, I believe they let you edit Google Sheets. You can have an offline uh, Google Sheet, but it won't be interactive and live. You'll have to download the image and paste that into your um, final output, whether it's an article or just online. And then you have numbers, which is standard on Macs. Con, it's only available for Macs. 
um, but it's also your pretty standard spreadsheet app. And then LibreCalc. So LibreCalc is kind of unique in that it has extensive customization options. So you can customize just about anything with LibreCalc. But because of that, it's a little bit unintuitive. So there's a lot of options and a lot of settings beyond Microsoft Excel and Numbers. Um, but a lot of folks will find it difficult to learn all of those different options and get the full, um, I guess, gamut of options for customization. So, and there's not a ton of guides out there for LibreCalc because it's a little bit lesser known and lesser used. All right, so those are the big four of the ones we already have. Here's an example of a chart in Microsoft Excel. So just looking at wildlife population from 2017 to 2022, looking at three specific types of wildlife. It's just a simple line chart, it's static. And then here is what that might look like in Google Sheets. Um, and this is just a simple one that I've adapted to it. And I'm going to show you an example of what a live Google Sheets. So this is what it looks like if you embed it in a website. So I can click on things, and as I hover over data points, um, I can see, so in 2020, there were 116 bears in our theoretical data set. Um, and that's pretty much the limit as to interactivity with Google Sheets. So there's some interactivity, and it's kind of fun. And if I were to add data to this table, it would update it live, which is pretty cool. OK. So moving on to the second one. Um, so we had the one you already have. Now we have the infographic designer. So this is one that I've had experience with in the library school at UNCG's library uh, master's degree program. So we made infographics as part of uh, one of the course assignments. So these tools are really good for marketing and outreach, creative reports and assignments, especially um, since they have student versions. Um, so they are web-based design apps and I'm gonna be looking at three. So Canva, Pictochart and Infogram. Um, they all have, they're all web-based and they're all kind of more focused on design. So they're pretty limited to standard charts and graphs. You won't see a lot of fancy things. Some of them have maps. Um, there's less focus on data and more on design. So you're kind of limited to a smaller data set um, and there's little to no analysis or other data research um, functionality. But if your goal is to do marketing and outreach or those creative reports, it's perfect. Um, and there's usually multiple export options. So you can export as PDF or image, a vector image that has like a transparent background and some other fun um, things. Canva does, I think, like a video export, which is interesting. So um, Canva is primarily, in my experience, I use it for flyers a lot. So like email listserv flyers. Um, so they have a lot of different media options. So you can make slides with it, flyers, infographics. I think they have like an Instagram post template and they have templates, which is really helpful too. Um, Pictochart is mostly solely for infographics and then Infogram is uh, infographics reports and they also have like a data dashboard example, which is pretty cool. And again, they're pretty out of the box, point and click, quick and easy um, to get started options if you are more of a designer than a data person. So here's an example of a simple data bar chart using Canva. So they just had a, what's your, what's your uh, favorite ice cream flavor? Um, and there's only a couple of data points here, so they can't go too crazy with the number of data you put in there, but it's good enough for this purpose. And then here are Pictochart and Infogram. Um, and it's important to note that um, Pictogram, Pictochart and Infogram are, uh, they have free account versions or free, there's a free version, but they are, uh, they do have paid versions or paid account types. So their free accounts are pretty limiting. So they're usually a student account. So you need a UNCG email to get to them. And they usually limit you to like five or so projects or infographics. Um, so it just depends on what you're going to be using it for. So if you just need to use it for one report, it's perfect. All righty. So third, we have the data viz designer. So this is for somebody who maybe wants to go a little bit beyond the infographic and wants to focus specifically on data viz, but you're still kind of staying with the design aspect. So maybe this is something shared on social media um, or if you have a blog post or a less science-y uh, scholarly article. Um, so these are web-based design apps, which are specifically tailored to data visualization. And it is data wrapper and raw graphs are the two that I'm gonna look at here. So they, again, have a graphical user interface with this point click button that you can easily find. You don't have to really guess how to do things. They tell you, they guide you through it. Um, and there also are a variety of chart types. So since they're more data viz specific, they have maps and they have a lot more com com complex, complex, complex uh, visualization options. 
So if you're looking for something a little bit more flashy or you have more complicated data or you have a more complicated message that you're trying to show, um, these might be better for you. They also have a variety of export options. So you can copy paste the image or export them into PDF or like a SVG file, which has that transparent background and um, is good for design in another program. So some examples using these, we have data wrapper, um, which hopefully y'all can see. Um, they have like a combination line graph and a bunch of crazy stuff going on with the y-axis um, and trend lines. And then on the right, you have an example using raw graph um, which shows the 10 most populous US cities every decade. So it's kind of like a little tree viz um, with some line graphs on the bottom. So there's a lot more combination options and, and fancy stuff. And then they have the normal maps and bar charts and line graphs too as well. All right, so moving on to the data viz wiz. So these, uh, this specific tool, Tableau Public and Tableau, the full version, are specifically for data visualization. So it is a software program that you download onto your computer. Um, for the Tableau public version, it's got some limited options versus the full version, but it is free. You do have to give them your email and then they will send you an email link to download the software, the, the program. Um, but it is pretty sufficient, um, especially if you're trying to learn Tableau before you commit to purchasing it. Um, so it has that graphical user interface with buttons. Um, it's similar to Data Wrapper and the other database design apps where you've got a variety of chart types, including maps and more complicated visualizations, or you could keep it simple. And they also have a lot of like data dashboard options, which is nice. So UNCG's um, data fact book, I want to say it's called the fact book that has like all of campus's breakdown of where, you know, different students are in what majors and what the demographics are. They use Tableau for that. Um, so you can look at that example if you would like. And I have that linked in here, but I'll show you a different example um, that actually uses Tableau Public. So there are a variety of export options with Tableau. They even have like a live embed option too, which is nice if you have a website. And again, there are limited features with this free version versus the full version. So if you're looking for tutorials on how to use it or examples, you wanna make sure you specify public. So here's an example of this, and I am gonna open up this example. New window. Um, so here's an example looking at, there we go. Here's an example looking at the city of Toronto. Um, so they have this interactive, oops, and it might not load. Tableau, um, one of the limitations with Tableau is if you have a lot of data, it takes a long time for it to load. So as I hover over images on this map, so I can see in Willowdale East, which is a small suburb in the city of Toronto, I can see the average income and I can click on it to get more information in a pop up. Um, so you can use it to show more data. Um, this one has a ton of data points, so it takes a little bit longer for it to load. So that's one limitation of Tableau Public. Okay. But it produces really nice output. All right, so another type of app or program is the network analyst. So for those of y'all who are in social science or social studies, social sciences um, type research, or if you're looking at social media networks um, and other types of network analysis, this will be most helpful for you, hopefully. So um, these are, uh, I have three tools here, Gethi, Kumu, and Palladio, which all of which I probably just pronounced wrong. Um, so some of them are software that you download and, and install onto your computer, and some of them are web-based tools that are more point and click, and, and uh, you can take them with you. So they all have that graphical user interface with buttons. They're very point and click. They focus on specifically networks and relationships, but some of them have other features. So for example, Palladio has a map where you can put your network on top of a geographic map, which is really cool. Um, and then there's also a variety of export options with this as well. Palladio, unfortunately, is limited to exporting as just the lines and the, the nodes of your network, um, which I'll show you in a second. So um, you can only export those, not the map behind it. So you would need to take a screenshot if you want the full map um, or like a screen clip. So some of those tools, you do have to take screenshots to get the visualization out to get it to your final product. Um, so Gephi is a uh, software that you download. It's primarily for uh, really helpful for larger networks, but you don't have to use it for larger networks. So that's really helpful for looking at like, you know, the entire World Wide Web and what countries it's located in and where uh, certain websites are connected or not. 
Um, you have Kumu, which is a web-based app, which has a paid version and a free version, which has some limits. Um, it has more infographic style, so you'll see it a lot in like journalism pieces, like media journal, journal media, so like the Wall Street Journal, for example. Um, and then Palladio, which is a web-based app that looks primarily at historic networks, so historical data, um, and they have a really cool timeline feature, which is helpful to see your data fully. So here is Kumu. Um, it's kind of zoomed in. This is one of their more complicated ones. It's interactive when you embed it. So I have just an image here, but on the actual live website, if you hover over or click on these little dots, it'll highlight the specific arrows linked to those dots. So they do have interactive options with Kumu. And then here is Gephi and Palladio. So this is a really nicely formatted version of Gephi. I've seen some hot messes coming out of Gephi. Um, which are indecipherable to, to me, but to a network analyst, they make a lot more sense, I bet. And then here's an example of a screen grab from Palladio. So if you were to export as SVG, you don't get that map in the background, you just get these nodes and lines, but you can also take a screen uh, shot of that, which is what I did. All right, and then I believe second to last, I've got the coder. So these are those text interface tools, so R and Python. They have graphical user interface options, but primarily you're going to need to use um, a, a text interface. Some knowledge of coding is a plus, um, although you can learn that as you're learning R and Python. So there are plugins available um, for these tools. So R and Python, just the big two of the, the coder kind of text interface tools are multi-use. So you can use them for a lot of other data activities. Their primary use is definitely not data viz. Um, but they have plugins and other functionality and features that you don't need plugins to use. So ggplot and pandas are plugins that you can install or add to R and Python, um, which will add data viz functionality um, so that you can make really nice looking charts. Or you can just make normal vanilla charts with R and Python as they are as when you install them. So these are things that you install on your computer. They also have, I think, web-based versions for Python. There's an online version that you can use. Um, there's a variety of data import options and export formats. And a plus for these is that they're high, they're very customizable. Like you can customize just about anything. If you can code it, you can customize it. Um, and if you're going to be using uh, uh, other data, like data analysis or data cleaning, data sharing, there's a lot of other libraries that you can install to these programs that will help you do that too. So you don't have to install 12 programs to do one thing. Um, Okay, so here are some examples using those, and I picked some colorful ones, but a lot of times you see the, you know, boring, quote, quote, black and white, sometimes really complicated charts that you see in scholarly journal articles, you'll see those um, usually come out of R and ggplot, um, especially in like the biosciences. So on the left, you have R and ggplot to make a histogram um, or like a joint histogram which has some transparency options, which is pretty cool. And then on the right, you have Python and pandas to do kind of like a line graph, like over time um, chart. All right, and then my last one is the hella specific tools. So here are a very few specific tools for very specific jobs. So if there's any folks in here that work specifically with geographic data, with text um, or text mining data, or if you are into genomics, um, then these would be good tools for you to at least look into or know of. So Geoda or Geoda, I say Geoda, is software for spatial data analysis. It looks at specifically geographic data um, and it has some pretty neat visualization options for geographic data in addition to analysis. You have Voyant Tools, which is a web-based app for text data analysis. So you copy paste your body of text into their little bubble or you upload it using a URL. So I like to use like Wikipedia pages and it will analyze all the text. And then there are some visualization options in there to help you analyze uh, um, the body of text that you picked. And then there's the integrated genome browser, which looks at genome data. And it does a lot of other things, but there are some viz options. So I like to include it. So here's Geodot. Um, you'll see on the left, there's a map of Mississippi, which has some data on there. And then on the right, you've got like a line graph looking at data over time. So you can do combination charts. You can export these as images. You can screen grab them or copy paste them over. Um, I believe they're working on or already have a embed option if you want to put stuff on a website um, or online. I'm not 100% sure about that, but they're constantly working on it and it's um, they have an open source version. So members of the community can contribute code and, and options and plugins. And then we have Voyant Tools on the left. So here's an example of one of the visualizations that you can use um, to look at like the frequency uh, of 
uh, a word, the frequency that words are repeated in a body of text. So this is looking at like Shakespeare's works. And there's like a little legend for what the colors mean hidden underneath this other image. Um, so like I believe purple is sir. So the number of times that sir is repeated in Shakespeare's works. And then on the right, we have integrated genome browser, which has a lot more examples and images, but this is just one that I picked. Um, you have kind of the genetic code down here is a little bit cut off, um, but it shows, uh, can help you visualize that since genomic data can be very complicated and big. All right, and then finally, some other resources that you might find helpful, especially as you're learning these tools or if you want more help. So storytelling with data has some really cool um, practice and uh, like exercises and challenges. So they'll walk you through, you know, how to make a really good bar chart or they'll walk you through a specific data set and the process that they use to pick a data viz and how they design a great data viz using that data. So they have really cool stuff to check out there. Um, you can get help picking the right chart with the data viz catalog, which I am going to show you all because I love this tool. So in addition to being able to pick a visualization using this, and I'm not seeing my little share screen, so hopefully y'all can see that. The little green box disappeared. Um, so when you pick on one of these visualizations, so I'm going to pick bar chart, it'll show you an example, it'll give you a description, anatomy, similar charts, and then the biggest important part for this session is the tools to generate visualizations. So this will overlap a little bit with the tools I've gone over today, but as you'll see, there are tons more tools out there that you could use. Um, so here's Python in here. We have Excel and Apple Numbers, Data Wrapper, Google Charts, Infogram, and a lot more. So depending on what tool or chart you want to make, you might pick a different tool and you might look through their gallery to see what is available. Alrighty, and then there is also the UNC University Library. So they have a great Learn Data Viz site or a guide on different data viz types and how to make them. Um, and then I have uh, that Excel example chart in the link as well. Alrighty, so and the slides again. I'm gonna paste that link in in case y'all would like to find those you those links. Um, and if anybody has any questions, thank y'all for coming. And I hope one of these tools um, will work for you or piqued your interest. Great, thank you, Joe. I learned stuff. Um, so as people are thinking about questions, um, I do want to let you know or remind you, you, you might be getting an email tomorrow. I know some of y'all have signed up that um, there is a uh, webinar tomorrow on um, algorithms by our information literacy coordinator, Jenny Dale. Um, it's tomorrow at 11 a.m. And again, I know some of y'all are signed up for both this one and that one tomorrow. Uh, so you'll get the webinar link tomorrow for that. So if you have um, time, here's a quick assessment form um, to let us know how uh, we did. So um, does anyone have any questions? I have a quick one. Um, a couple of years, maybe a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago, I saw some presentations from librarians about um, Google data. Um, studio, but I never hear anything about it now. And like, it's not on that data catalog that you sent out that looks great. Um, so do you have any experience with that? Is that kind of going away? Was that an experiment Google did and it didn't work out? What are your thoughts? On yeah, data so studio? Google Data Studio. Um, so they basically take the functionality from Google Sheets where you've got that insert chart and you can make a chart or a simple chart. Um, and they created a way to make dashboards. So it's primarily for data dashboards I have found. Um, I'm going to pull up a link to it. Google Data Studio. Yes, so if you're trying to look at active data that you are actively collecting, it's live, um, and you want to keep an eye on it and how it's going, um, you might use Google Data Studio. So here's an example of that. Um, I love that my, there we go. My browser is bugging a little bit. <laughs> um, so uh, it's very helpful for live data um, and searchable interactive visualizations. Um, but a lot of times the learning curve to learn how to use it is a little bit higher. And it basically does what Tableau Public does or what Tableau does. So it's kind of like a, a Tableau equivalent um, where Google Sheets is the equivalent to Microsoft Excel, if that makes sense. Um, so 
you can look at data that is updating. So you might see one for like COVID data, for example, um, where you can see the like current statistics. Um, you can technically use it for historic or not live, like already completed data sets, um, but it, its primary, I guess, use is intended for constantly updating data that you want to keep an eye on. Um, but they do have like map options. So they have a little bit more functionality than Google Sheets does on its own with maps and combination data viz. Great, that answered my question. Thank you, so, Chris. <laughs> I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. Um, so um, remember, there's Joe's contacts, contact information. Um, they are our data visualization librarian. So feel free to email them. Um, remember, you also have liaison librarians. If you uh, forget, Joe is the liaison to uh, GIS. Uh, yes, sorry. Um, and all of y'all have librarians as well. Whether you're a grad student, um, a faculty member, or staff, you could uh, ask uh, us anything and we'll figure it out for you. So thanks for coming. Uh, again, we have one tomorrow. Remember to look at our winter offerings uh, and then uh, be on the lookout as well. In January and Campus Weekly, we do these every semester. So we'll have another round of online learning and innovation webinars, as well as these research and application webinars. Um, so uh, feel, please fill out that form. Let us know if you have any ideas, if you want to hear from us. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I am going to end this. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Right.